Bed probes are awesome. They save you the hassle of having to manually level your bed. They save you if your bed's not perfectly flat and they ensure that you always get that perfectly amazing first layer. But what if your printer sabotaging you? What if the bones themselves that make up your 3D printer, the humble aluminum extrusion is to blame and it's out to get you? Let's find out what I'm talking about in today's video. So this right here is an aluminum extrusion and if you've built a 3D printer in the past five or six years, you're probably well familiar with it. Uh, originally 3D printers, we built them out of acrylic frames, out of wood, but over the past while here, we've kind of standardized on the aluminum extrusion as the frame style of choice in 3D printers. Of course, there's always gonna be outliers, but for the most part, most 3D printers nowadays are made out of aluminum extrusion. So first off, what is an aluminum extrusion? Well. To make one, you simply take a billet of aluminum, you force it through a die under heat and pressure, and it comes out in whatever shape you made the die be. So in our case here, we have some V-wheel 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter aluminum extrusion. Now this process generates a lot of heat and what's coming out is basically a long noodle of whatever you're pressing. And once it's done, there's a few processes that take place. It's quenched. Uh, usually it's uh, grabbed on each end and pulled tight. This hopefully straightens it out. But afterwards, it gets chopped into length, it gets anodized, and then it gets shipped out to whatever company is gonna make stuff with it. The company takes it, they may do some extra stuff to it, you know, mill a few holes in it, throw it in a box, ship it to you, use it to build your printer. A precision motion system, an aluminum extrusion, is not. Now there's different grades of aluminum extrusions. Some from higher reputation manufacturers are gonna have uh, better tolerances, but there's no guarantee that your aluminum extrusion is straight. So, if you're basing your motion system on aluminum extrusion using something that can potentially wear out as well, your printer may be sabotaging yourself. So I'm gonna use this granite slab here to show you what I mean. So let's go to the bench. So this is my granite slab here. No, this is not a stare at layout table. It's just an off cut of quartz actually. Um, but it, it's flat enough to show you what I'm talking about. So I have some aluminum extrusions here. And one of the reasons um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, it took me a while to actually find an extrusion to use as an example here. So these are some aluminum extrusions. And as you can see on this piece of quartz, they're relatively flat. Uh, nothing appears twisted. These all seem good. These are just random extrusions I've had floating around for a while. But then we get to this guy. And if you can see that, it's not sitting flat. This extrusion is twisted, okay? And this one, I believe is from an Ender 3 V2. I don't know exactly which extrusion it is, but I had to dig through all, pretty much all my extrusions before I found this one. Okay, so it, it's got a twisted extrusion. Okay, I, I, I got a bed probe. It, it, it'll just compensate, right? Well, this is where you're wrong. And unfortunately, I don't actually have a machine I can show this on because none of my machines suffer from this issue. And this is something that really depends on the machine. Some machines are more susceptible to this kind of error than others. So you may not have this issue, but if you are having this issue and you've been wondering why you can't get a good first layer on your printer, no matter what you do, remember how in high school, your math teacher said one day, you know, trigonometry and Sakatoa, you are gonna have to use it in the real world. Well. Uh, Today's that day, so let's go to the computer. So while my state-of-the-art high-tech simulation software is loading up, I just want to take a moment to thank those that help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do. I would not be able to do it without your continued support. So if you want to see more content such as this, make sure you like that smash button or consider becoming subscribed to the channel. There's links in the description as well to help out. And it looks like it's loaded up. So I'm going to show you right here how a twisted extrusion can really mess up your bed probe and your bed mesh. And even though you got that bed probe, guess what? It's not gonna be accurate. So looking at our high-tech state-of-the-art software here, uh, you can see I've simulated a standard tool head. We have our nozzle mounted behind it. We have our bed probe and we have our bed here. Now for the purposes of this, we're assuming the bed is perfectly flat and it's not twisted or curved or anything. So we have our tool head and in a normal system, how this works is it's gonna come down and again, your probe is going to stick out past the nozzle obviously, or it's gonna have a sense distance greater than the nozzle, but you're gonna have your software calibrated so that essentially when the probe is zero, the nozzle is zero. So we're gonna assume that these are both both equal distant from the bed for the purpose of this high-tech simulation. So again, perfect world, probe come down, touches off the bed, that zero. But when you're printing, remember, 
Your probe is not where your nozzle is. There are setups that use nozzle probes, but most systems don't. You have your probe mounted somewhere else and you've told your firmware what the offset is. So again, you come down, you probe your bed, you get your bed mesh, and then you go print. So what happens when we add a twisted extrusion to play here? So in this uh, simulation here, again, this is a, uh, a V-wheel extrusion-based motion system. We have our tool head, it's mounted to a twisted extrusion. We've done our bed mesh, we've done everything to the manual, we've moved to the middle of the bed, we've set up our Z offset, so we probe the bed in the middle, and then we've calibrated so that zero is zero on our nozzle. So we're good to go, we're ready to print. But as you're printing, as your tool head's moving down the extrusion, it's now twisting, okay? We're looking at it from the side here. So it's twisting because your extrusion is twisted. It could twist this way or it could twist this way. So let's say let's say you have now, you know, from, from where you set your Z offset to zero, you've, you've induced a two degree tilt, okay? Well now, remember, your probe isn't where your nozzle is. There's an offset. You probe your bed here, okay? Your printer thinks, okay, this is zero, but when your nozzle's in that position, your nozzle's now high, okay? Because there's an offset. What if what if you went the other way? What if it was twisted in the other direction, okay? You, you probe here, but when your nozzle's in that position, it's, it's now below the bed, okay? So what's happening is as your tool head moves down, it's twisting, and because these are no longer on the same plane anymore, and your printer can't really know that, your nozzle is now higher or lower than what you've told it zero is, and you're either digging into your bed or your prints are no longer sticking to the bed. Now, an easy way to tell this is happening is to look at your bed mesh, and here are some bed meshes that were generated with a printer with a twisted extrusion or Another possibility is an incorrectly installed rail. This issue isn't limited to just V-wheels, by the way. I've seen it mostly in V-wheels, but all motion systems are susceptible to this, and I'll touch on it later. So hopefully you only have one axis that is twisted. So you could see this pattern repeat across the entire length of the bed. And you, you can see there's variance to this bed mesh, but there's a clearly defined dip or rise that's straight front to back on this bed mesh. So that's indicative of a twisted extrusion. Now, the fun part is, on a motion system that you know commonly is referred to as the bed slinger or a Cartesian style, if your bed is twisted, you can have the same effect, okay? And this also doesn't affect tool heads where the probe is behind the nozzle or in front of the nozzle. It can affect systems as well where it's on the left or right of the nozzle. Basically any system where your probe is not the nozzle itself is susceptible to this kind of issue. And you might not even know you suffer from it. So as I said earlier though, V-wheels aren't the only one that are susceptible to this. This was actually a relatively common issue that happened with the Voron 2.4 series when we ran the dual MGN9 rails. If they were not installed perfectly, there was a chance that your rails could be misaligned and as your tool head moved down the extrusion, it would twist. Also on a system such as a Prusa where you have dual eight millimeter rails, if those rails are not perfectly in line and they're twisted in any way, you can have the exact same sort of issue here. So. This is something to kind of, it may not be affecting you now, you might never run into it, but this is just kind of a knowledge tidbit. You may want to stuff in the back of your head there and just kind of keep it in mind because you might suffer from this one day. And if you don't know what to look for, you could spend a lot of time going down a rabbit hole trying to figure out why your bed's not flat when it's actually an aluminum extrusion on your gantry that's causing all this trouble. So how do you fix this? Well. Fortunately, you're pretty much gonna have to solve this manually. Now, depending on the firmware you're running and your software, you may be able to actually manually go in and adjust your bed mesh to compensate for this by adjusting the offset depending on certain regions of the bed. That's a bit of a caveman-y way of doing it, I believe. I think the best way to do this if you are suffering from this issue, you may have to swap out an extrusion, swap out a bent rail. Again, this could really happen to any motion system that has the possibility of something being twisted. I just happen to see it a lot with V-wheels. Also with V-wheels, your V-wheels themselves are consumable. They wear down eventually. So if your wheels are starting to go, you might start seeing this, especially if you have like flats on your wheel, because if you have flats and the wheel's not traveling in a consistent motion, it could be rocking your tool head as well, which is throwing off your probe results. So keep that in mind too. So if your printer is currently lacking in a bed probe right now, I actually have a video on how to add an inductive bed probe to pretty much any printer that has a metallic bed for around $3. I'm going to link that video right here. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you learned something new. And as always, cheers.